Let's talk about Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. Um, in his famous book, 1984, George Orwell wrote, quote, who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. With those words in mind, I wrote my book in defense of Thomas Jefferson to correct the historical record for Mr. Jefferson. My book is a modest attempt to stem the heavy tide of revisionist, what I consider revisionist vitriol, directed against perhaps our greatest founding father, who one historian referred to as, quote, the man who invented the United States of America. I believe my book proves once and for all that the allegation that Thomas Jefferson had an affair with a slave, Sally Hemings, is pure fiction, possibly politics, but certainly not historical fact or science. The lurid myth reflects a recycled inaccuracy that has metastasized from book to book for over 200 years. A chorus of revisionist slave historians have misread language and invoked chic psychological explanations to misinterpret Jefferson's actions. If truth conforms to facts, the Sally story reflects one of the most striking derelictions of scholarly integrity in American history. Thus, in my view, the key criterion in the Jefferson-Hemings debate is what is the most verifiable and credible evidence. Oral history falls short, especially when it is confused with oral tradition. So let us talk about the most verifiable evidence that, in my view, proves Mr. Jefferson was right, that he was innocent of the scandal beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt. Let me borrow a phrase from David Letterman has his top 10. I'm going to have my top 15 reasons. The top 15 reasons why Thomas Jefferson did not have a sexual relationship with Sally Hemings, the top 15 re reasons why he didn't have any relationship with Sally Hemings except benevolent employer. Number one. The 1990 DNA results were gross distortions at best and utterly misleading to the public at worst. First of all, let's be clear. The DNA results would be excluded in a real trial because they did not come from Thomas Jefferson himself. The DNA blood was taken from a male descendant of his paternal uncle, Field Jefferson. The 1998 study matched a male Jefferson, not Thomas Jefferson. More importantly, there were at least 10 other, possibly 12 other Jefferson males in and around Monticello who are candidates for the fatherhood of Sally's conceived child. Few historians, except maybe Bob Turner and Cindy Burton, bothered to evaluate the second significant DNA test. There was a second DNA test on the so-called Woodson family a slave family who also claimed paternity with Jefferson and Sally beginning in France. The allegation by Jefferson's political enemies in 1802 were that Jefferson was the father of Tom Woodson, the baby that supposedly Sally had when she returned with Jefferson from France. The DNA test on the Woodson family failed to match any male Jefferson. Jefferson was proven absolutely innocent, although the public never hears of this exonerating DNA test on the alleged Paris love child with Sally and Jefferson. Why is this significant? If the Woodson DNA had matched a male Jefferson, this would almost certainly prove 100% that Thomas Jefferson was the father of her child, since he was the only Jefferson in Paris with her. But again, there was no DNA match with the Woodsons. The revisionist historians cannot explain this in any way, shape, or form. This is crucial evidence. Number two, Randolph Jefferson. Randolph Jefferson was the president's younger brother, and I think Cindy talked about him this morning. 
He is one of the most likely, in my view, of Sally's sexual partners. Based on the DNA test, he would have the same Jefferson Y chromosome haplotype that matched perfectly the Hemings DNA. Randolph had a reputation for socializing with the slaves. He was expected at Monticello approximately nine months before she had the baby, Esten, that was the DNA match. And this is proven by letters that we have from Jefferson and Randolph. Randolph, unlike his accomplished brother, was described by one historian as a half-wit and lived just 20 miles south of Monticello. 